Did you know that your digestive issues can actually be related to bile flow? If you've ever struggled with bloating, pain after meals, or feel like you've just had issues digesting fat, this video is for you. In this video, I'm going to explain what bile flow problems are, how they can disrupt your digestion, and some of the key symptoms you should look out for. From changes in stool colors to nausea after eating fatty foods, I'll cover the signs that indicate your bile may not be flowing properly. Then stay with me till the very end because I'm going to share some tips on how to get your bile flowing more naturally and help speed it up if you do have sluggish bile. What's up and welcome to the video. My name is Dr. Daniel Ricciardi, gut health expert, licensed pharmacist, fitness enthusiast, creator of SIBO Shortcut and the gut health supplement Blow Blocker. In this week's video, we're going to discuss what is bile and why is it important for you? What are some of the common reasons bile flow problems happen? What are some signs and symptoms that you have a bile flow issue? And then how can you prevent or correct bile flow problems? And quick disclaimer before we start, this video is for educational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Bile sludge and gallbladder issues can have serious underlying causes that require medical attention. So if you experience persistent symptoms like dark urine, severe abdominal pain, nausea, or jaundice, seek professional medical advice promptly. All right, section number one, what is bile and why is it important? Bile is a yellowish green liquid produced by your liver and then stored in your gallbladder until it's needed for digestion. When you eat a meal, especially one containing fat, your gallbladder will release bile into the small intestine where it will help emulsify fats, meaning break them down so your body can use them. Besides digesting fats, it's also helpful for absorbing fat-soluble vitamins such as vitamins A, D, E, and K. It helps eliminate toxins and waste from your liver, and it even acts as a natural antimicrobial, which can help rebalance bacteria in the intestine. Moving ahead, what are some common causes and risk factors of poor bile flow? Number one is pretty simple. It's just the choices that you're making are not stimulating your gallbladder to release bile. As I mentioned before, a meal containing fats will stimulate that gallbladder to release the bile to digest fats. If you're eating a really low fat diet, this may not happen or at least not happen to a large extent and that bile can sit there for a long time and end up getting really thick and sluggish. This can hold true if you're doing some sort of extended fast, especially doing extended fasts on a regular basis. Having low stomach acid or taking acid blocking medications can also for prevent the gallbladder from pumping out bile because when you're digesting food, when it goes from the stomach into the small intestine, normally it's really acidic and bile along with sodium bicarbonate that the pancreas releases helps neutralize this acid. If the contents of the stomach are already not that acidic, you may get less bile pumped out to try to neutralize this because it's not needed. Other causes and risk factors of poor bile flow are diabetes and insulin resistance, taking estrogen replacement or estrogen oral contraceptives, which is birth control as indicated by this 2021 article and then having your cortisol either be too low or too high. There's also certain medications that can reduce bile flow. This article from 2023 mentions a bunch of different medications that can actually be involved in this. Several antibiotics, which is amoxicillin that also contains the clavulanic acid, erythromycin, azithromycin, and ciprofloxacin. And then as I mentioned before, there's also oral estrogen contraceptives that can also be involved in this happening. Moving on, what are some of the signs and symptoms that you have slow bile flow. Changes in stool color are really common. Instead of being the darker brown color, they can actually be a lot more pale color, such as a light gray or light brown color, even appearing greasy or just having a lot of loose stools. Having abdominal discomfort after eating fatty foods. If this happens, your body may just be struggling to break down fats because bile isn't able to get pumped into the small intestine efficiently. Having unexplained weight loss. If you're not digesting and absorbing foods, specifically fats, this can cause you to absorb fewer calories and lose weight. If Itchy skin, dark urine, and jaundice are a few other ones. The latter two may be more severe where you'd want to get medical help a little bit sooner. Jaundice is a yellowish tint to your eyes or skin. And then with dark urine, obviously you can have more yellow urine if you're really dehydrated, but if you're well hydrated and your urine is still dark, this may be an indication. In terms of lab markers, there's one specific lab marker called alkaline phosphatase. If this is either elevated past the normal range or in the upper level of normal, while your other liver markers such as AST and ALT don't seem to share the same elevation, this may be an indicator of slow bile flow. All right, last section, how can we prevent or correct bile flow problems? First thing I would do, if you have a known issue that needs to be addressed, look at doing that first. So some of the ones I mentioned before are diabetes or insulin resistance, estrogen dominance, cortisol imbalances, or certain medications if you don't really need to be on them. Another thing you can do is support your body with the right supplements. Some that may help with this are D-limonene, which is derived from an orange peel. It's a 
pretty good agent at dissolving gallstones when they're already there or just clearing out bile sludge. There's a couple studies I'm gonna have right here. This one's back from 1991, medical dissolution of gallstones. With this one, they actually injected it directly into the gallstone and it worked really well. And then there's also this review article that talks a lot about it as well. In terms of the dosage, this particular dosage, 1000 milligrams, one to two times daily for two to four weeks, seems like a reasonable dosage. There's also this 2024 article, which is a combo of milk thistle, artichoke, and green tea when looking at biliary sludge. Patients in this study had what is known as biliary colic, which is pretty significant. It's a sudden severe pain in the right upper abdomen that occurs when gallstones block the cystic duct, which connects the gallbladder to the common bile duct. So milk thistle, it's a liver producing herb that enhances bile production. Artichoke is an example of a digestive bitter, which stimulates bile production. And then green tea is an antioxidant supporting liver function and bile flow. So 40 patients were in this study. They took 150 milligrams of each of these two capsules daily for three months. And this graph right here that I'm looking at, it shows the results. So on the left is the study group that actually took these supplements. So it looks like 55% of people had a reduction in bile sludge, 30% had it completely disappear. And then for 33% of the people, there was no modification. Uh, then if you look on the right in the control group, there is a small amount of people, 8% that had a reduction of the bile sludge, but for the most part, 84% had no modification, which is what we would expect. Uh, some other agents that help with bile flow, taurine, which is an amino acid that helps produce bile and bile flow. One to two grams daily in divided doses may be a good dose to use for this purpose or something like 500 milligrams three times daily. There's phosphatidylcholine, which supports bile composition and prevents thick stagnant bile. A dose of 500 milligrams twice daily may be a good option for this. So I'll touch on ox bile real quick here. If we have sluggish bile, theoretically, we may have the body producing enough bile. It just can't get into the small intestine well enough. So unless you've had your gallbladder removed, I'd probably do some of the stuff that I mentioned earlier before using ox bile. But if you do want to try an ox bile supplement, the dosage that works well for people can really vary greatly. But I would say between 50 and 500 milligrams per meal may be a good place to start. Diet wise, if you want to include a few things into your diet instead of trying to take a bunch of supplements, things like digestive bitters or bitter foods can be a good option. Some examples are arugula, dandelion, artichoke, and then lemon or apple cider vinegar can also be good for supporting the liver. The last one I'll mention is extra virgin olive oil. Olive oil works by squeezing the gallbladder to really pump out that bile. So quick warning here, if you already have known gallstones or some sort of blockage in the gallbladder, it may not be a great idea if you go out and take a shot of olive oil every day. This may be a better solution for after the bile sludge is already cleared. Maybe you can work back some olive oil safely into your diet. All right, that is all for today. If you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you see anytime I post new content. If you're new to my channel, I post a new video every Monday in YouTube shorts throughout the week. If you've had bile flow issues, please let us know down in the comments what has been the most useful thing you've done. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.